For years now, you've seen the Embassy Series featured as one of our sponsors. The goal of the Embassy Series, according to co-founders Jerome and Lizette Barry, is musical diplomacy. It's not about finding out what's wrong with the world, but celebrating the very best in all countries and cultures through the universal language of music. The public is invited to an Embassy Series event, and the format is simple. First, the Ambassador offers a welcome. It is my privilege and pleasure to welcome you to my residence. I am very glad that you could join us this evening for what I'm sure will be a great concert. The artist performs... And then it's time for socializing and enjoying the authentic food from the host country. On this special program, we salute the 25th anniversary of the Embassy Series. At the residence of the Ambassador of Poland, the guest artist for the Embassy Series event this evening was pianist Thomas Pendolfi. He thrilled the audience with pieces from Bernstein, Poland's own Chopin and Paderewski, of course, and Gershwin. To learn about the history of the Embassy Series, I spoke with its co-founder and director, Jerome Barry. Jerome, 25 years. How did the Embassy Series come about? Well, uh, Dennis, uh, we've lived here for a number of years. And, of course, living abroad about nine or ten years ourselves at the beginning of our marriage, actually, uh, and having uh, our two children in different continents. Uh, you know, we sort of got used to the international type of uh, life. And when we came to Washington, we were so intrigued by the fact that this is a great international city. And uh, so we were invited to embassies, and we said this is a wonderful way to meet people, the sh different nationalities, etc. And my wife and I were noticing that uh, it wasn't very crowded. And uh, one of the reasons is because the embassies were inviting people from Congress, you know, senators and congressmen. And uh, they're very busy, as you obviously know. We said, you know, we should have artists of the country and, of course, music of the country. And we had food of the country because there was always a little reception afterward. Over the past 25 years, the Embassy Series has produced almost 600 concerts at 88 embassies. You know, a lot of you might know that our first concert that uh, I ever organized was 1991 in the, the Polish Embassy. And we had so many wonderful concerts. What would you say would be two or three major accomplishments that you pulled off? It's very difficult to pin everything down, but I would say three countries that really we needed to understand much more uh, would be uh, the Russian Federation, uh, the People's Republic of China, and uh, also Cuba, uh -huh. and a number of other countries. So we devoted a lot of work to cultivating a relationship with these countries, and it worked out very well. How would you define musical diplomacy? Musical diplomacy is bringing people together. We call it uniting people through musical diplomacy. And for people to come together with one idea in mind, to listen to beautiful music of the country, artists of the country, and then have some wonderful food afterward, and to talk to each other about the concerts and really connect with each other. What's your vision for the Embassy Series going forward? Well, in this particular age of uh, a lot of divisiveness and people uh, harboring misunderstandings, we want to make the Embassy Series as even more important for the future of getting younger people in and uh, cultivating them in such a way that they appreciate uh, a great culture and that they become used to understanding the mindset of these different countries. And I intend to expand that as much as possible, involve more people, do more partnerships 
with organizations that have the same basic idea but maybe are not uh, used to having music as the center of their activity. Thank you, Jerome. It's a pleasure, Dennis. Thank you so much. This is America and the World is brought to you by Whittle School and Studios, the U.S.-China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Julia Chang Block, President, the League of Arab States, the Republic of Haiti, the Rotondaro Family Trust, Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology, sharing tomorrow. The Forerunner Foundation, dedicated to forward-thinking public policy. And the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. We're here at the residence of the ambassador from the Republic of Poland to the United States. I spoke with the ambassador just before the evening's festivities began. Mr. Ambassador, thank you for your hospitality so much. Good to be with you. A uh, big year for Poland. Tell me a little bit about it, huh? Poland regained independence in 1918 after World War I. Uh, after 123 years of partitions, Poland was occupied by its neighbors, Russia, Prussia, and Austria. So finally, in 1918, uh, Poland uh, became independent again. Poland is 1,000 years old, not 100, ah. because you know the Polish state was established in 966, <laughs> so it's much older than America. <laughs> and uh, in the 20th century, uh, we had like 20 years of great development after World War I, after regaining independence, then six dark years of World War II, mm. and after World War II, another many dark years of communism, but still, you know, to some extent, Poland developed, you know, industry developed, agriculture developed, uh, many cities were renovated after the destruction of World War II, and Poland really, you know, regained independence again after the fall of communism in 1989. Mm. So during the last almost 30 years, we enjoyed a great development, also after Poland became a member of the European Union in, in 2004. So, um, there has been a great economic development. Now Poland is in an excellent situation with growing GDP, low unemployment, many educated people. So it's a great country. And a high standard of living, I gather, huh? Yes, high standard of living, very nice cities. When my uh, friends from Europe and America come to Poland, they are very surprised that this is such a modern, well-developed country, you know, mm -hmm. not, not backward country not underdeveloped, but really developed. And we are actually uh, now uh, uh, among most developed countries in Europe. Poland is the sixth largest country of the European Union. Mm. So we have a lot to offer also for American investors. How about um, the population? What's the size of the population? Who's living in the cities? Who's living in the countryside? Tell me a little bit about it. Uh, the population is a little less than 40 million, it's about 39 million, yeah. so, so it's not a big population, but for Europe, uh, Poland is, is, is quite big, and people live you know, in cities, and people live in, in small towns, and people live in villages, so, uh -huh. so agriculture is still important for Poland, but, but also the industry is, is you know, developing, and, and um, modern, you know, um, entrepreneurship. So uh, Poland is, is a great country to visit. Everyone's invited. Uh, the major cities, Warsaw, of course. Huh? Warsaw, of course. Kraków, of course, the oh, old yeah. capital, uh, very much liked by American visitors because uh -huh. it very, looks very ancient or medieval, rather, and uh -huh. Renaissance. And Gdańsk in the north, uh -huh. uh, and uh, cities like Lublin and Wrocław, and Szczecin, very difficult to pronounce. So many, many great cities, uh, a lot of nice countryside and mountains and sea. Mm -hmm. So we have, you know, everything and very moderate climate. So it's, it's good for tourists from all over the world. 
What's the uh, relationship between the United States and Poland? Well, the United States actually was very helpful in 1918 with you know, regaining independence. President Woodrow Wilson himself, mm -hmm. in his 14 points, you know, uh, uh, expressed this need for independent Poland. It was uh, also, there was also a musical aspect of that because he was a friend of Ignacy Jan Paderewski, mm -hmm. a great Polish pianist and statesman. A statesman later uh, the Prime Minister of Poland who really encouraged you know Woodrow Wilson to do such great things so these relations um, have been great you know especially in you know recently in the last 30 years very strong Polish American cooperation in energy and security uh -huh. so you know the United States is, is a major partner for Poland outside of the European Union and this cooperation is, is very important for us. Uh, what would you say would be at the heart of the culture of Poland? Of course, music. Music? Music. We're, you know. we're Chopin, in the right, we're right place. Chopin, who, who was Polish and uh, who lived in Poland uh, when he was young, then left for, for, for Paris. Uh, Paderewski and many, many others, Szymanowski, but of course, Poland is well known because of Chopin and his, his great uh, piano works. Mm. And you yourself are very interested in classical music, huh? I'm interested in classical music. I'm actually a historian of literature and culture, but, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, I also wrote a few papers about relations between music and literature, about playing, you know, playing old music on historic instruments or historical instruments, so, uh, and relations between Know, playing uh, music on historical instruments and translating old poetry into old language. So, I mean, I was looking for relations between music and literature in, in various aspects. So, so I'm very much fond of, of um, classical music. What do you do with this phrase, musical diplomacy? Oh, this is the, 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 the best kind of diplomacy because music is an international language. You, you don't have to understand words to understand music. And when you present music of your country, uh, this is really you know, great, uh, a great way of promoting your country. Mm -hmm. So that's what what's, uh, we do very often. We, we present our great musicians and, and music. Uh, that's also a plan also for um, our cooperation with some neighboring countries. Uh, I don't want to reveal details now, but we want to, to present you know, uh, a few mus musicians from countries from, from uh, our region, not, not, not only Poland. So that's, that's what we do as countries, as groups of countries here in Washington. It's a great opportunity to also to invite people and to enjoy music together. Uh, we are going to uh, take part in the Embassy Series and a famous pianist is going to play for us tonight. Uh, do you know a little bit about him and tell us? Oh, Thomas Pandolfi is, is a great pianist. That's the reason we invited him. I actually listened to, to him playing Chopin and Paderewski um, a few times and I really you know, enjoy listening to him and I think the, the audience will enjoy today. Mr. Ambassador. Thank you very much. Thank you again. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Pandolfi played brilliantly and offered just about the right amount of commentary between pieces to make his musical selections even more enjoyable. What is it about Chopin's music that is so ideal? Well, it is this perfect marriage of poetic lyricism and brilliant virtuosity. After the performance, I had a chance to sit and talk with Thomas Pandolfi. How does it feel to be playing in the residence of the ambassador from Poland to the United States and playing Chopin? Well, that's a very great honor. Chopin, of course, is the principal pole composer and uh, the ideal composer for the piano. Uh, as I mentioned during the concert, nobody did it better with regard to 
the marriage of pianistic brilliance, virtuosity, and this deep poetic expression, which is absolutely unparalleled. And uh, for me, it carries me to another world, and I hope my listeners feel the same way. I try to uh, structure the program, first of all, uh, as, as the ambassador said in his opening remarks, uh, to pair American composers, two great American composers with two great Polish composers. The Phantom of the Opera was a fun encore to do uh, with a British composer. <laughs> um, but that's what I, that's what sort of the theme that was running uh, throughout. And uh, I certainly hope the audience enjoyed it. They, they certainly roared their approval, so I'm very appreciative of that. One of the things I like so much is you guided us through each of the pieces. Told us a little bit about the background of the piece, what to listen for. Do you do that all the time in your concerts? I didn't used to do that at all. I, I thought it kind of broke the flow when I first was asked to do that. This was a number of seasons back. And then uh, a presenter just out of the clear blue said, when I showed up for the concert, would you mind speaking a little bit about that? And I thought, well, I don't know, maybe. And I thought, well, let me give it a try. I did it, and the audience responded very positively to it. And ever since then, it seems to be a, a, an ongoing trend that's growing. Uh, a lot of conductors do it, uh, sort of verbal program notes with the, with the uh, audience in between their selections or do pre-concert lecture. Uh, I think it doesn't matter necessarily the format, but the audiences seem to like the personal connection between artist, music, uh, and and the and they themselves, the audience, and it kind of makes it a little bit more entertaining, I think, and maybe a little bit more interesting. Know what to listen for. Know what the artist's views are. Sometimes it's a little um, academic to read program notes, as wonderful as they might be. And I understand there's some great program notes in tonight's booklet, and I'll be curious to read them myself. But even with those there, it's nice to hear the artist's point of view. So we get to know you a little bit. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about your background. My background. Well, I s s fell in love with music at a very young age. Uh, I was about four and a half, five years old. Parents played all the time classical music in the house. Every time there was a piano piece that came on the radio or my parents' old LPs, I would run to the piano, this upper register of the piano, and try to play along. And I'm told the sounds would fit. They would match rhythmically at the very least, sometimes harmonically, even though I didn't know what I was doing at that point. Uh, then I started lessons, and my progress started to be rather rapid. By the time I was 10, I was publicly performing. 17, went to Juilliard and did my formal training there for six years, undergraduate, graduate. And uh, slowly but surely started to perform on a, on a larger scale for, for audiences worldwide. What's the kick? What's the kick of you sitting down at the piano for yourself? The moment I sit down, it's, I get the same enjoyment that I do the first time I ever heard a piece of music. And I hope that always transmits to the audience. I don't know if it does, I can only hope. Uh, but that's the way I feel inside. And that's the, um, that's the enjoyment I get out of it. Chopin loved the dance forms, and he composed in waltzes and mazurkas and polonaises. They all have something in common. All three dances are in three-quarter time. And that means, of course, there are three beats per measure. But what makes each one distinct is the following. The waltz is probably the easiest under, to understand because you have this sort of um pa, pa accompaniment underneath the melody, which gives the waltz its particular lilt and charm. You might think of each of the beats as light, lighter, and lightest. The mazurka is exactly the same, except every other measure, the third beat gets a special accentuation, which gives the mazurka its unique character. And then, of course, the Polonaise is the most stately and noble and grand of the dances. And you have this very distinct rhythm, which uh, is very clearly heard throughout. And that gives the Polonaise its uh, grandeur, really. So I will play these next two works in order uh, without speaking in between. 
the waltz in C-sharp minor, which has a rather melancholic mood in the outer sections, but yet still, of course, maintains this style of the waltz beautifully. And then the middle section has a ray of sunshine as it delves a little bit into the major key. And then we have the Polonaise in A-flat major, Opus 53, sometimes known as the Heroic Polonaise, which is arguably Chopin's most famous composition and most beloved, certainly most rousing. When Paderewski was a young man, and this is long before his, his great fame, uh, he was seeking experience uh, by playing for lots of individuals, and he was also seeking sponsorship from patrons. And so he befri befriended um, a wealthy retired physician whose favorite composer was Mozart. And the young Paderewski would go every week practically to play for this gentleman at his home. Well. After a while, at this stage in his career, Paderewski ran out of Mozart pieces to play for the old man. So he decided to play a trick. And he says to the, to the physician, he said, I have a new piece of Mozart here that's going to be unearthed. You're going to hear it for the first time. And the, the, the old gentleman was so excited, he thought, oh my goodness, here's uh, an opportunity to hear a world premiere in my own home. He plays the, the minuet, and the doctor is so excited. He says, what is, the, what is the title of this piece? And Paderewski says, it's the minuet in G. And then he had to confess, by me. And of course, the old man was even more charmed. Here is the minuet in G by Paderewski.
For information about This is America and the World and to watch all of our programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, and look for us on Facebook and Twitter. You can listen to all of our Ambassador interviews on our podcast, The Ambassador Series. It's available on our website and iTunes. This is America and the World is brought to you by Whittle School and Studios. The U.S.-China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States. The Republic of Haiti. The Rotondaro Family Trust. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology, sharing tomorrow. The Forerunner Foundation, dedicated to forward-thinking public policy. And the Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings.